test out my compact 4K TVs, I've organised a road trip in a trio of camper vans with a series of tests en route. To help me assess the results, I've invited along a pair of legendary kids' TV presenters, Dick and Dom. If anyone knows what bright, colourful and loud should be like, it's these guys. Aha! Hey, John. Uh, he is. Ah. Morning, gentlemen. Hi, John. All right. So, we're off for a, a, a gentleman's day trip, are we? Yes, I thought we'd drive out into the country would be nice. Uh, we know you, John. There's got to be a catch. Uh, I'd like to help you test some TVs as well. <laughs> oh, mm. right, OK. Yes, I've rented three of these made homes. They've each got a TV in the back. Do you want to take a look? Go on, then. First up in my blue camper van is a Hisense 7400 series. It's the cheapest on test. Quite a modern-looking telly. It's a frameless design. I think the stand's integrated well and reasonably thin. And a very conventional remote. Very nice. Let's go on to the next one. OK. All right. Oh, oh look. Sony, now you're talking. Dick's brown camper van contains a Sony X70. Like all the TVs, it has an LCD screen and can upscale content to 4K. It's got a more obvious, thicker frame, hasn't it? Making a statement, though. Looks good. It's got more basic legs. Not so much design gone into those. Oh, look at the chunky remote. Yeah. And in Don's yellow camper van, there's a Samsung, which is the most expensive on test and comes with voice control via Google Assistant, Alexa or Bixby. I don't like your legs. I beg your pardon? What's wrong with them? Oh, look. Cheap. Oh, uh, they do look a bit flimsy, I've got to be honest, but this is your daily remote. And it's a smart remote, you can talk into it. Yeah, you can say, watch any programme with Dick and Dom on it. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Let's start our engines. For the first leg of our big day, we're heading to the countryside. Lovely day out. But this is no jolly, there's serious work to be done. I think the specs of the televisions are quite similar. Uh, there's a bit of a difference in terms of the different modes they offer. John, what do you mean uh, about modes? Well, they're to change the look of the picture and also to alter some of the other characteristics. Don't think I've ever changed the mode on my TV. The Hisense has two modes for standard and sport. The Sony has 12 modes, including all sorts of different colour combinations, whereas the uh, Samsung has four different colour modes, plus one for gaming. Who said music should be the soundtrack of a good road trip? Next up, connectivity. In terms of HDMIs, the Hisense has four. <laughs> Sony has three. And the Samsung also has three. But I can't hear John anymore. Something I was blissfully unaware of. The Sony has a headphone socket, which could be very useful, cos often Bluetooth headphones don't work very well with TVs. <laughs> He's in front of me delivering details without anybody listening to him. <laughs> well, never mind trying to listen to me. Let's listen to the audio quality of my TVs instead. Right, time to crank up the volume, starting with the high sense. I've chosen some cinematic music to play on it. Hmm. The Hisense supports DTS Virtual X, which should offer multi-dimensional sound with appropriate content. Hisense also claim no distortion at higher volumes, but seems to be distorted slightly at the top there. It does feel like there's a little speaker attached to a telly. Yes, it's a token effort at sound, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah bit iffy. Next, it's over to Dick's camper van and the Sony. I'm going to drop the bass with some drum and some bass. Go on, crack it up. Go on, Johnny. OK, you're Johnny good. Here comes the drop, is it? Come on, here What's that entail? Come on, John! Whoa. The Sony has Clear Audio Plus, which claims to auto-tune the sound settings for a better listening experience. Liking your moves, John? I'm not comfortable with them myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good, clear sound coming mm, towards you, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it is, yeah. The bass felt good. Well, I thought it was great. So how do you rate it compared to the high sense? Oh, it definitely beats the high sense, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But how will the Samsung fare in the back of Dom's camper? A bit of a 90s pop music, John? Your yes. favourite? <laughs> My favourite. <laughs> he always wanted to be in a boy band, you see. I so see. He's letting it all out now, yeah. The Samsung's adaptive sound feature should tweak the audio to suit what you're watching, even if it's a boy band wannabe. Yes, no doubt about it. The sound is good. Yeah, it's got a good top range, actually. It's quite clear. It has. It does seem to have got more, yeah. more sparkly, tizzy things yeah. going on. Is it as good on the bass as the Sony, though? Well, probably not. In comparison to the other two, I'm not as fulfilled as I thought I was going to be. So, out of the three, which one wins the audio test, do you think? The Sony. The Sony. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Marginally over the Samsung, with the Hisense a poor third. Mm -hmm. I agree. Good. Good. Back on the road. Now, on to Bodnar Arboretum, a delightful setting I think they'll love. John, uh, 
not quite the uh, lads away trip that I thought it was going to be. Oh, no, I've got lots of amusing activities lined up to prepare us for the next test. Follow me. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Bodenham is an idyllic location to film some 4K footage on my iPhone 12 Pro Max for the upcoming picture quality test. Hello. It's an excellent shot. There's the Salix Caprea, better known, of course, as the Kilmarnock Willow. Yes! Perfect activity to uh, get some action shots. With the footage in the can and light fading, it's nearly time to hand back the camper vans. But before we do, we need to compare the all-important picture quality. Now, I've thrown together a few shots from our splendid day out. Shall we take a look? Yes, please. Yes. We're going to assess colour, contrast, clarity and movement to see which has the best picture. So, starting with the high sense, I think those colours are a bit drab, mm. frankly. It's a bit dull, isn't it? Yes. Dark. All the TVs offer some HDR support, but the Hisense is the only one to have Dolby Vision HDR. It just doesn't seem to pop out the screen. I'm going to go as far as to say, I'm not even sure it looks like a 4K picture, that. Could be just mm. HD. Ah, true. Sony's well-established triluminous quantum dot technology claims to give you a wider colour palette. The colours are grey on it. Yes. But the Sony's simulated high refresh rate is a bit of a letdown. I'm rather less convinced by the motion handling. Oh. Um, I don't think it's necessarily working very well. well. Yeah. The Samsung's very sharp, isn't it? Mm. The Samsung has the company's QLED quantum dot technology and supports HDR10+. Will it have what it takes to make my phone footage stand out? It's more <laughs> realistic, but it hasn't got that pizzazz like the Sony. Mm. Doesn't it doesn't give you that extra little something. But on the other hand, it does seem to be handling the motion slightly better, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It does, actually. After a day of testing our compact 4K TVs, the Sony is undoubtedly the better sounding, but it's a closer run thing when it comes to the pictures. So, which is best overall? Is it me or is there something slightly surreal about John driving round the countryside, testing TVs in the back of a small camper van and dancing to drum and bass with Dick and Dom? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Remember last year we tested large screen TVs in a very large motorhome? Well, these are smaller TVs in smaller motorhomes. It's perfectly logical. <laughs> yes, that's the reference. <laughs> right. <laughs> I get it. OK, tell me about the TVs. Which is the best? Well, the Samsung had some good qualities. It handled motion better. It's got its gaming mode. But overall, I think for audio and picture quality and value for money on the day the Sony was best. We all felt that. Well, thank you for that, John.